Hello. Welcome back to Table 17. We're continuing our Wednesday night series on the Ultimate Kingdom, and we're in the fifth chapter of the, our book we're studying, and this chapter is called The Harlot and the Bride, and we're in the second half of that chapter. So we're on the fifth segment out of parts four, five, and six. And again, today's date is January the 24th, 2024. Let's continue. John beheld another beast arising from the earth, but this beast had only two horns, suggesting that he did not have as much authority as the first beast, which had ten horns, but he appeared as a lamb, meaning that he symbolizes false religions, false prophets, and those who appear religious but do not exalt the true Christ, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. This is not a future event, for the world today is full of this deception, exclamation mark. This beast looks like a lamb and deals in miracles, but upon close observation, we can see that he has not been slain. Paul's second Corinthian letter reveals who this beast is. For such are false prophet, apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 through 15. The second beast, therefore, does not represent only one false prophet, but all the false teachings of our day. Verse 12 tells of an alliance between the first and the second beast. And that alliance already exists today between world governments and false religions. There is ample evidence of this alliance. One example is the worldwide television ministries that Satan does not battle because their message does not particularly threaten his kingdom. The witness that Satan wants to keep silent is the true witness that is, will establish the kingdom of God. He will not spend his time battling those who are not preaching the truth, but he will wage unceasing warfare against those who preach the message of the kingdom of God, because he knows if hearts and ears receive that message, his kingdom is doomed. More evidence of the alliance between government and false religion is revealed in verse 14, where the first beast was wounded by a sword, and it appeared as if he would die. Yet the second beast gave life to the first, and he lived. In a like manner, some of the world's false religions help keep governments alive today. It should be sufficient to say that if the, religious, the religions in some of the world's eastern countries no longer existed, the nations themselves would disintegrate. God gives his believers a seal in their foreheads, thought patterns. The beast, false religion, also gives his believers a mark. The number of the beast, the number of a man, which is 600, three score and six, which is 666. This number represents the false, the failure of man to achieve the full potential and the limitations with which he must live. Man has never reached his full potential. He achieves his potential, full potential only when he takes on the image of Jesus Christ. Man was created on the sixth day, and 666 represents his limitations. It is important to note that God gives his believers a seal, while Satan gives a mark. God's seal is applied to our thought patterns, while Satan's mark is placed on the hand, the part of the body with which we labor and earn our livelihood. This indicates the authority that Satan has in the businesses, commercial markets, and schools of the world. He has the power to give or withhold jobs. He has a philosophy that has deceived many people, particularly in higher education, where Speculation focuses on philosophies, 
contemplating the knowledge of good and evil. More damage has been done to the Christian church by the world systems of education than by any other force. I do not mean to deter anyone from seeking the education that will enable him to secure and hold a good job, but keep in mind that the wisdom God imparts on eternal spiritual matters is rarely taught or learned in school. Things of God are only taught by the Holy Spirit. Lord, in Jesus' name, open our eyes and open our minds that we can hear your word, Lord, as these things come to us. Lord, I pray again over our minds, Lord, that we would hear your words in our in our thoughts. And Lord, let it reach down into our hearts, in Jesus' name. Satan marks non-believers like a brand put on an animal. 666 represents humanism, the mark of the beast. When I was a small boy, my granddaddy, Mershon Tamberlin, showed me a mark on the ear of one of his pigs and said, Now, son, that's the family mark, and that'll be your mark, too. Now, son, that's the family mark, and that'll be your mark, too. And that mark appeared on every pig or cow that my grandfather owned. How sad it is that Satan has a mark on so many folks in the world! Exclamation mark. He has marked their minds, their thoughts, and controls their work habits. These people visibly show the mark of the beast. Today, we are so close to reaching our true potential in Jesus Christ which will change our mark from 666 to 777. We are able to reach that potential, however, only in the Spirit when we have, made, when we have the mind of Christ, pray in the Spirit, and are members of the body of Christ. When we reach the place that our bodies are totally submitted as temples of the Holy Spirit, when our spirits join His Spirit, and when our minds become the mind of Christ, we will no longer wear the mark of man. We will be sealed with the mark of the manifest sons of God. Man will again realize his God-given right to take dominion over the earth. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders, and no man could learn the song but the hundred and forty-four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They are they; These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. In their mouth was found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of God. Revelation 14, verses 1 through 5. What a victorious passage of Scripture! Exclamation mark. The church, which is the 144,000, cleansed, purified, redeemed by the blood of Christ, sits now before the heavenly throne of God and sings the songs that only the redeemed can sing. The voice of many waters is no longer the worthy lamb, but the voice belongs now to the 144,000 who sing praises to their God. When this earth becomes the kingdom of God, heaven will become a literal place. But until then, it exists right where we are when we worship God in spirit and in truth. The Apostle Paul said, God hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 6. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Verse 4. I have heard this verse explained in countless ways from the celibacy of the priesthood to becoming a eunuch. 
I have heard it used not only as a justification for breaking up marriages, but also for not getting married at all. None of these explanations fit this simple Old Testament concept, which conveyed to John's readers that the 144,000 men and women were set aside, dedicated to purity, and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. These people represent first fruits of the kingdom before God's throne until the church literally becomes part of them. <clears throat> However, we are first fruits, we as first fruits can already sing the song of the redeemed. Exclamation mark. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. I believe we are at this point in prophecy as messengers, angels of the gospel. We cry to a dying world, come and join us as we worship the Lord of our creation, exclamation mark. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Come, join the mighty army of God. That is the cry of the hour. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has all nations drank, has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in their forehead or in their hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name? Revelation 14, verses 8 through 11. Babylon shakes, and the nations of the earth are perplexed, as Jesus said they would be. They don't know what to do, and they don't know whose side they are on. They build up arms to fight, yet they don't even know their enemy. The world systems Babylon stumbles, and the church of the living God will help spoil the nations of the earth. The church will be that mountain that Daniel saw coming down that will finally consume all other kingdoms. We sound the trumpet of the third angel, which warns, Don't involve yourself in world systems. Don't marry yourself to worldly affairs. Do not confuse God's things and the world's. The church needs keen discernment to differentiate between those things of God and his church, and those things of the world. Knowing the difference is absolutely vital, and that is the warning of the third angel. The smoke of their torments, verse 11, constantly reminds us that throughout eternity that satanic forces will not survive. They fail because self-love embodies all of them. People cannot be authorities unto themselves, unto themselves but must achieve unto unity with others. Jesus said that our prayers would be answered when we agree with someone else in prayer. You must ask yourself, do I have the ability to agree with someone else in the spirit? Question mark. We'll start another one in just a minute.